Give your YouTube videos or short films that extra punch with some high quality stock footage from Action VFX. Affiliate link below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Graboid Tober. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to be reviewing Tremors 3 Back to Perfection. And the uh it's another direct to video sequel uh released in 2000 in 2001. Uh uh this time uh Michael Gross uh who plays Burt Gummer, he gets top billing for this. Yes, he is our main character. Mm -hmm. And uh I'm just gonna point this out out there. This third one kind of feels like a mid a mixed bag to me, just from a filmmaker's standpoint. Yeah, I can understand that because looking at the DVD case I have right here, uh, it is I have the original quadrilogy all on one case, and this is the only one that is rated PG. Really? Mm-hmm. So every so all the others were uh, rated PG thirteen. That's correct. Wow. And you can kind of feel it. Boy, the two the two thousands were not kind to th to uh, third movies. It's just like Jurassic Park three. Well, I actually read an article on that that says that Jurassic Park three had its own charm, but we we might review that later. Mm -hmm. And. And actually, kind of, and kind of like that, I feel like there is at least some charm to this third, to this third one. Yeah. I mean, I mean, with just the title called "Back to Perfection," I mean, the title is kind of misleading, but kind of tongue in cheek. It is, yeah. And the charm, and. Uh, the charm that I find in this movie is that even though this is, uh, even though I don't think any of the any of the actors or any uh, who have returned from the first movie, uh, so so Nancy, uh, Nancy the mom the mom from uh, the mom from the first movie, uh, her daughter Mindy, still played by Ariana Richards, and uh, good to see her again. Yeah. And uh, Miguel, who pl who played the farm, who played the farmer, you know, the Hispanic farmer from the first movie, and even Melvin, the pain in the ass kid, the pain in the ass kid, who's now, well, a pain, a pain in the dick. <laughs> oh my goodness! He's still, really yes. still a shit wipe. Mm-hmm. Uh, they all they all return, and uh, the charm that I find is that. Uh, is that there's uh, you get this sense of history that that uh, these characters and even the even the actors have like they didn't just stop to, they didn't just stop talking to each other after the cameras were done rolling they still like they still hung out yeah and it according to the actual film it has been 11 years since the events of the first film mhm mm they even refer and they reference that uh, twice in the movie. But, yeah. But anyway, the whole premise is that uh, while it, while on return, uh, returning from an ex an excursion in Argent, uh, Af uh, Bird returns Argentina. from an excur Bird returns from an excursion from Argentina uh, to find that uh, to find uh. This this guy named J named Jack has started up a grab a graboid monster tour business, and uh, it just kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, the Jaws ride from Universal. <laughs> uh, yeah, or the Jurassic Park ride that shut down recently. Yeah, t I think that's I think that's getting updated for Jurassic World. It is. Yeah, it will be opening in 2019. Hmm. Uh. But anyway, uh, that, but then it's kind of like a classic, uh, oh, through, through, uh, uh, as the film progresses that, uh, this phony, this, uh, phony little theme park, right, turns into a boy who cried wolf, uh, the Graboids actually return. 
and uh in but instead of you know repeating of the first movie they uh the mother decides to call in the government for help and that's when they th- which threatens them with and they threaten them with evacuation uh jet uh, a deal is cut, and uh, they and they let and they let uh, Bert uh, hunt hunt graboids, which he's been, that he's best at, provided that he provided that they can capture a live one, and and all the residents of, per, of perfection can stay. And of course, you know how this song and dance goes. Nothing goes right. It's a veritable Murphy's Law. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the uh, graboids uh, ev- evolve into shriekers. Uh, we'll get to that later. But then, but then they evolve further into the third stage of their life cycle, and uh, which gives them very in- an intense. It gives them an intense heated advantage. <laughs> I enjoyed that pun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can. They can. They can fly. And uh, they still they still see heat, and so it's kind of like this. It's kind of like uh, if you put if you took the plot of Tremors two, and set it back in into the setting of the first movie. Yeah, and that, uh, and of course you know you know how that works. Uh, they they actually kill all the monsters. Well. All but one, but we'll get to that later. And uh, everything's just now all all fine and dandy. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, with that with that being said, I think we can can should we actually move on to characters? Uh, sure. All right, so uh, lot, so not not much has changed with some of the original characters. Uh, Bert Bert is still uh, uh, very knowledgeable about guns, and he's very and he's very antagonistic towards any towards uh, any of these these uh, blind subterraneans. Uh, I feel like they that uh, his. His kind of go- his uh gun ma- his uh mania with guns has kind of been kicked up a notch. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Needless to say, he's he gets a lot of great lines that are that are just very sn- these of uh, great snide remarks. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> which is which is what we love best about the character. And uh, actually, he's even, he's actually even learned. Uh, uh, actually, at the end of the movie, he's actually made peace with he's made peace with one of the graboids, uh, a creature that he just just despised with a passion. Yeah, I mean, and that's not something we really saw coming. Mm-hmm. I think I think the reason why he's he's okay with living in peace with the one graboid is because uh, uh the alternative wasn't the alternative wasn't any better oh yeah uh, let's see um, and it also didn't help that this graboid didn't you know split open and give rise to shriekers oh yeah uh, yeah, yeah we'll get we'll get to like what's what's new about gr- what we what's added to graboid uh, uh biology uh later later on down the road uh Nan- yeah. yeah nancy uh is pretty much pretty much the is pretty much the same uh mindy however <laughs> uh, oh my goodness mindy however uh she's she's now a teenager and i'm just i'm quoting th- this is pretty much most of her dialogue, and I'm quote, and I'm going to be quoting Deadpool on this. Oh look, I'm a teenage girl. I'd rather be anywhere but here. I'm all about mean comment, followed by long sullen silence, followed by mean comment. <laughs> Although I have to say. 
Uh, Miss Richards did a very good job with her role in this one. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what all films she's been in, aside from these two Tremors movies, Jurassic Park. Yeah, I... Uh, yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm sure she has had a, su- a successful career. Her yeah, um I actually follow her on Twitter. Um she's actually a budding artist right now. She's very successful in that field. Budding artist? What you mean like painting? Yeah, paintings. Oh. It's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess some I mean there sometimes there is more to life than acting. Uh remember let's see. Uh remember the uh the remember the girl who played young Sarah Whittle in the first Jumanji movie? Ah, yeah. She actually she's actually a con- she's a country musician now. Oh. Mhm. Anyway, yeah. Let's <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Miguel also hasn't hasn't changed much, but I think, but I think the one bit of dialogue that I like that shows how shows uh, how how much he's kind of grown to respect Bert is, uh, you know, after Bert is proven right about eminent domain, you know, and his yeah. his response is is and people called me paranoid, and his response is I I did, but not no more. <laughs> <laughs> and Melvin. Uh, the shit stain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, I know. I hit. No, they kind of set him up as supposed to be like this B plot villain, and he doesn't even really get. He doesn't even really. Doesn't get much screen time. It's it, yeah. It's practically he's practically non-existent. Yeah, he shows up towards the beginning or towards the end of the first act, basically, mm-hmm. and then he shows up at the end. Yeah, uh, his he for some reason he became a real estate he a real estate agent, and he's planning on turning uh, Perfection Valley into like a very small town with a you know very small community. Uh, to do that, he's like pay, he's paying the residents you know to move out so he can do that. And, and I don't understand. I don't understand his reason. His reasoning, especially from the dialogue, uh, his response to Bert when he says that you grew up here, and he goes, "Yeah, and I wouldn't wish this town on anybody." I was like, "Why would you build homes in the place that you hate?" Money, John. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So, oh, I think now I get it. He's bu- he's getting everyone out of there just to spite them. Pretty much. Okay. Alright, and he's even... Yeah, he's even still an asshole, like, when he's... Like, when his beeper goes off, and Bert tells him to to throw it away, what does he do? He chucks it at Bert! (laughs) Right at his feet, and Bert's like, what the fuck? I was like, like, seriously? (laughs) You've been through this exactly once. Mm -hmm. Did you learn nothing? No, I think no, I don't think that was no, I don't think it was uh I don't think it was that he forgot how it does. I think he w- wanted that thing to go after Bert. Because look Oh, cause, he <laughs> Yeah, cuz listen cuz what happened before the grab boy <laughs> Listen to cuz what happened before the grab boy showed up? Like 5 seconds before that. Uh Bert has pretty much told Mel pretty much told Melvin that no matter how much money you offer me, I'm not going to bend. Mm-hmm. So he, so Melvin pretty much thought the best way to actually get to get the last obstacle out of his way of his ranchettes is to get is to you know uh, a little accident you know on the side accident. Yeah. So sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all, uh, he gets his comeuppance. Oh yes, and that is the best. Mm-hmm. And this comeuppance continues into the credits. <laughs> I know that's what I, that's my that was actually one of my favorite parts 
that's my favorite part of the credits. My the one I laughed so much when he's uh, finally unloading all of his anger and and reasons why uh, why he doesn't like Bert and what and what what tops everything. And I hate that hat. <laughs> <laughs> it it's funny. Yeah, you right wing no good. <laughs> Redneck psycho. God damn you, Bert. And I oh, hate that you. hat. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. This movie I it's not as good as the first two, mm -hmm. but it's still fun. <laughs> yeah. It's not uh uh, let's see. Okay, new, I think we can now go on to the new characters. Uh, we... Uh, yeah. Alright, uh, we'll we'll save the best, or I guess most annoying, for for last. Uh, let's go... Uh, let's move on to... Let's move to Jody Chang. Well, uh... Okay. Walter's niece, you know, Walter from the first movie, who didn't... Who got eaten... After he named the creatures, uh huh, and you know, so we got a little bit, so we got a little bit of a legacy thing going. She runs the st she runs the store now, and she also names the new creatures. Yeah, although not although not as sophisticated as Graboid. Yeah, she just yeah she decides to call them ass blasters. Uh, and I quote. Sounds like a bad porno film. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, but she's kind of that. Uh, her character is just like wants to plan everything. Wants to ha plans everything down to the letter. So if if you've ever seen if you've seen uh, Parks and Rec, she's a lot like Leslie Nope. Hmm. If you haven't seen Parks and Rec, I actually highly recommend it. It's a very funny show. Can you can actually start at right about like two epis two epis two of the two final uh episodes of season two. That's when it starts to get good. Alright. I'm aware it has Chris Pratt in it, that's about it. Yes, a fat Chris Pratt. Yeah, that was before he bulked up for uh Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Uh yeah, she's she is just so very she's very business minded, and and <laughs> I think I think uh, Jack is actually kind of a perfect foil for her. Oh yeah. <laughs> Did you expect their budding romance? Not really, but. To be in hindsight, I sort of can see it, but and in hindsight, it also it kind of works much better than the <laughs> the the kind of the puppy love that Mindy had. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, just hearing just hearing her trying to talk talk about Jack uh, is just kind of is kind of funny. Like saying, I think. I'll bet he just does this to hide a broken heart. I'm, t I'm gonna, t I'm telling you uh, right now, sweetie. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing deep about that guy. Yeah. He sounds, he sounds like it, but don't, but don't forget, he's still wearing a cowboy hat. <laughs> I think that's a little stereotyping, John. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I didn't say you had to be. <laughs> and I didn't say I disagreed with you. <laughs> uh, anyway, Jack. Uh, Desert actually, Jack. Yeah, Des Desert Jack, who's kind of, who is, he's like, he's like the last, the last three male characters, uh, Va Valentine, Earl, and Grady, all rolled into one. I mean, you have the you have, kind of have the gruff you have the gruff look uh, of Earl. You have the uh, 
uh you have the uh uh the accent of of Valent, uh that, that Kevin Bacon had and you have and you kind of have the I, the idealistic uh business the ideal business uh 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 visionary the business visionary that Grady was yeah and apparently Grady and Earl managed to start off Monster World yeah and it's it's a very good it's a very big success which makes me wonder why can we see that at some point please yeah 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 but Jack is <laughs> honest honestly there are parts that I like about him and parts that I and parts I don't like uh I can't I kind I like <laughs> I like uh, how he tr I like this kind of bitten this uh showmanship that he has on on the desert tours yeah <laughs> especially when he plays he plays a tape of uh, of a worm I guess an inchworm crawling to uh crawling towards the gra the graph of the truck and it's supposed to mimic this seismo monitor <laughs> and oh and and su and also subtly uh turns on the kill switch to make to mimic uh, a ca a car flooding like it won't turn over and the engine won't turn over uh, yeah <laughs> But, but. It's certainly something a couple d dudes can just cook up in like a day. Mm -hmm. And they even have what's his face? I I forget his name. Buford. But, Buford. Yeah, also known as gra Graboid Food. Yeah, I I mean the reason why I remember his name is because of how Jack just Jack just said his name j when he's scolding him. He goes Buford. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just enjoying the scenery. Yeah, I'm sure you are. <laughs> you're, dro you're drooling on yourself. <laughs> and he doesn't. And sometimes he does have. He does have uh, good quotes. Something that you actually can think think about, and some that are just down, that are just uh, downright hilarious. Uh, you're about as sharp as a bowling ball. I was like, damn, damn. Uh. But the, but the I, but I like uh, I like the uh, the scene that he and Jody had on the rock, and and he's and he's just laid back. He's just letting he's just letting it flow. And Jody Jody is going like, "What is wrong with you? Aren't you worried at all?" Yes, I am, but I do not dwell on that which I have no control. Now I got, uh, I have, o now I have OCD, and so to hear, so to hear that, is is kind of like, wow. That's, a, I really should rethink. I need to think about the things I do in life. Yeah. And, and but I mean, I still can't. I have to disagree with him, but still, I mean, you'd think he'd be even slightly concerned visibly about freaking worms eating mm -hmm. people, little wormy monsters running around, and mm -hmm. yeah, and this is why I th why he's almost like great. He's almost like Grady because even he, because uh, he's just. He just he likes the you know the excitement he get he has the uh he likes the adventure, but he doesn't under but he doesn't understand, well, graboid hunting. Yeah, it was like the size of a whale. <laughs> yeah. I know, I've I, seen him. <laughs> uh, it was, I was like, I, um, is it really worth just is it really worth being out here just to be eaten by El Blanco? The noise, the, the sound of the explosions were so loud it drove him away. You really should read the comics.
Yeah, that yeah, that's why I, I that's that's why I, he's he is like Grady. He's a lot like Grady. Uh, you know he, but you know he gets his moment. Uh, he gets his moment. Uh, he ends up at, he ends up rescuing Bert. You know uh, by attaching attaching uh, attaching the watch that Bert that Bert had. I think we should probably get to that one later. Yeah. The, Although we did save him a, a first time. Oh yeah, right. Okay, so he gets two moments. And so he so what he you know what he lacks in 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 uh, brains when it comes to graboid hunting, he's pretty good at thinking on his feet. Indeed. You know, just just like Earl. Yeah. All right, and okay. How about the Latin? How about the last character is El Blanco? Ooh, I want one. <laughs> you want one? Now on the on IMDb is the IMDb page actually made actually brought up a very interesting a very interesting point is that uh, there is that there is this kind of this parallel between this parallel to Moby Dick. I mean, even the, oh yeah, I read something about that. Yeah, even I mean, even uh, when even when uh, Bert sees him for the first time, he use he quotes the the book "Call Me Ishmael." <laughs> so it's it's a great white graboid. Uh, so obviously, you know, reference to Moby Dick, and. Uh, the, and uh, normally, graboids are are supposed to be are very aggressive cre are very aggressive creatures. But apparently, this one this one was very passive, in kind of so in kind of a reverse of the the whale from the book, who is normally which is normally a pass a passive creature, but in the book is very aggressive. And instead, and instead of uh, Bert being the one who has the obsession with the graboid, it's the other way around. The uh, El Blanco seems to have this obsession with Bert. Yeah. Hey, Bert, he likes you. And if I could find my grizzly fifty cal, I'd have a thing for him. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's it. And it is actually it is very. It's a, it's a very interesting observation and even, and kind of makes it feel like this movie is smarter than it's actually trying to be. Yeah. <laughs> and uh so what's what's very unique about uh El Blanco is uh Ian, how about I let you take this one cuz uh I just realized <laughs> I've been I've been talking for about 15 minutes. <laughs> or tw or twenty no minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, El Blanco is, seems to be different from other graboids in that how it's again fairly passive compared to the other ones we've encountered, and it's sterile. It will not produce shriekers, so really it just hangs around being a graboid. Mm hmm. And that's part of I think that's part of why Bert doesn't mind it, mm -hmm. because even though yeah it's a dangerous creature, uh, the entire town voted and they all signed up for their for like graboid barriers underground mm -hmm. to, just to keep El Blanco out. Yeah, and to be to be fair, I mean, the, uh, graboid is actually less dangerous than a shrieker and an ass blaster because. Uh, shriekers when they when they eat enough food they multiply. Yes, and ass blasters fly. Mm hmm. And shriek shriekers and ass blasters they also see heat. So even though they might have some protection for that, they all it's graboids are just kind of easier to deal with. Yeah, just build a barrier and you're fine. Mm hmm. And this. And the short-lived uh, TV series, he's uh, he's kind of he's kind of like he's the town mascot, and they 
and they treat they treat him almost like a train going through a town. Uh. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's annoying. It's loud. Kind of, kind of disrupts your day a little bit. But uh, you know, it's not. What's the harm? I have to find that series. You can act. Oh yeah, uh, it's uh, ten bucks on Amazon. I'll just watch it illegally or something. For t- or I might just go to Amazon because there's a lot of stuff on Amazon I need. Yeah, I was gonna, I was, I was gonna say for thirteen, only thirteen episodes, and for ten, it's thirteen episodes for ten bucks, and you'll, and you'll just watch it illegally. <laughs> Me. Uh, and, but anyway. All right. I think now we can probably move on to we can move on to this the next stage of the graboids life uh, life uh, cycle. What are you thinking, Ian? You still there, John? Yeah, I am. Okay, yeah, you're cutting out on me for a little bit. Oh, okay. But yes, the next stage of the life cycle. All right. So uh, this movie introduces uh, not only just the next the next phase of, phase of Graboid's life cycle. It also shows where th- it also shows where they came from. We th- we know they come from eggs. Yeah. And what's v- also what's very interesting is that uh, the shell they can lay dormant for three hundred years before hatching. Yeah, so which kind of makes makes me think. So if this was two thousand one, if the if the movie takes place in two thousand one, and those and if the grab the graboids now were laid in seventeen oh one, I'm kind of wondering: Did the founding fathers ever come across any of these? I mean, seriously, uh, the, if. I mean that would pr- that would probably ma- that would probably make the Revolutionary War just a whole lot more fun. <laughs> quick, quick, Universal, do that. Yeah, I don't get no graboids in space. <laughs> yeah, save that for Tremors Twelve. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> boy, we can we can write this stuff, can't we? Oh, it's not that hard. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Universal, please hire us. Yeah. Uh, so any, all right. So anyway, yeah, we. So the way these and so how uh, these how these eggs come about is from is from the third the third stage that uh, that graboids change into called uh, called ass blasters. You know, it's it's funny when you're th- it's funny when you're thirteen, and. You, when you're watching this series, but then when, but uh, when, but then when you become an adult, you kind of real, you just realize <laughs> this is stupid. That's a stupid name. It is. What would you name them? Hmm. 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 Jados. J A T O. Rockets. Ah. Uh, okay. So the so the these creatures exist for the sole purpose of uh, of uh, car- carrying uh, their their eggs across distant lands. And that's a rather interesting take on the biology, and it makes sense. It it does, but I can't help but think wouldn't wouldn't that also make sense if sh- if shriekers could also lay eggs when they when they get when they get old enough? Uh, technically, uh, shriekers and ass blasters are the same thing. Oh well, yeah, they just shed their skin. Yeah. But eh, it 
could, but remember, uh, Shrieker's sole purpose is to multiply rapidly. Yeah. Based on the amount of food in the area. Uh huh. So, I guess they could lay eggs if you want it. Like they, the makers wanted to go that route, but I don't. I mean, because eh, I mean, because think about this: we don't know exactly the lifespan of these creatures. We don't know how long they live. Yeah, I mean, we know the eggs lay dormant for three hundred years, but aside from that, mm -hmm. we don't really have a time frame. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, what we I guess what we I guess what we do know is that a graboid a graboid when undis when undisturbed for two for two weeks will turn into shriekers, and if sh and if shriekers are not killed within twenty within twenty four hours, then they turn into ass blasters. So far, all that we know of how long an ass blaster lives is based on the TV series when the last living, the last living ass blaster, yes, one survives. And it's and it's and it's hilarious that they go to, that uh, they're sent over to Vegas, but they're sent over to Vegas to become the to become a stage animal for Siegfried and Roy. Remember what? when Siegfried and Roy, you know the state, the the, the Vegas uh, magicians. And what did they use the ass blaster for? You know how they use you know how they use tigers for their for their stage shows. Yes, I think something similar to this. I don't really know what their show is like, and I think they are not even around anymore. And I don't mean dead. I mean I don't think that I don't think they're performing anymore. Um, I my mind's just racing into all the potential lawsuits that could result from one accident. I I know, no, but uh, in but in the TV series, uh, it takes place. Uh, that ass blaster returns, and it's apparently like two years. This was two years after the events of, of Back to Perfection, so we at least know that uh, an ass blaster can live, well, up to two years. I don't know if it it still survived anyway, so maybe even longer. Hmm. But, ah, but yeah, but any, but anyway, what what kind? But what kind of does make it the uh, ass blaster uh, different different from uh, it's from the shrieker is is not only just its ability to fly, but how it takes off. Oh. Uh, and it, it, it it's partially it, ingenious, but at the same time stupid. Like I said, this movie's dumb fun. Uh-huh. And and yeah, so what it does is that uh, there's two chemicals uh that that is stored in the in the back of its body and then when it and then when it and then it releases those chemicals, and when it reacts the, to the air, uh, it ignites and then launches launches itself up. And how it mixes and how it mixes it up is well, it it shakes its ass. Oh my goodness! Ass blasters were twerking before it was cool. Oh my goodness! Someone <laughs> make that into a meme. Someone make that into a meme. <laughs> no, not just the meme. Make it a gif. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs> uh, Send it to me over Facebook, and I will mention you. <laughs> Keep on twerking. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can picture all the gifts now that we're starting, John. <laughs> yeah. Can we monetize those? <laughs> uh, mm, I don't think so. I think I think the. I don't think we can. I think it would have to go to Universal first. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like that's just gonna be some weird fan fiction twerking half blaster. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Anyway, yeah. 
before uh, we went down this rabbit hole, uh, I forget where we were. Uh, let's see. We were. Let's see. We're talking about uh, ass blaster biology. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's pretty. I think that's it. Uh, now for some. Okay. Now even though it's kind of fun, it's funny and stupid how the, of uh, how it takes off. It's. It did man. It did manage to get to have a have a few victims, or one, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, it killed Miguel. And. And you know it's when you think it's uh when you think about all the when you think about all you think about all the history, uh that the, that uh the townspeople had and how they and how they all knew each other i mean it's it is rather sad it is yeah yeah i mean i mean miguel was just kind of had this had this kind of the this cheery spark to him like you know he the, did yeah, yeah i enjoyed him yeah like dental floss i always carry it with me and I saw it on a rerun of MacGyver. Mm -hmm. The comics were better. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoyed him. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess, and that's why it was so very sad when he got killed off. I mean, he survived. He survived graboids, but it, but it was an ass blaster that did him in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, I did remember something else about uh about ass blasters. Uh it turns out that uh, it turns out that even though they have the, they have uh even though they have the same heat sensors as streakers, there's the one the one strength that streakers have become became a huge disadvantage for for ass blasters. Oh uh, yeah. When they when they eat enough food, they don't multiply. They go into a food coma. Yeah, and that's rather convenient to be told to Bert after he, oh my goodness, oh. blew up all his MREs. Not only his MREs, his entire house. Not just the house, the compound. His com the <laughs> <laughs> His tool shed was a husk rolling down the hill. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! And he and he actually gave the best. That was just so very well acted, and uh, he gave the he gave I think one of the best one of the best the funniest and best lines for for such a revelation. What kind of supreme being would condone such irony? Well, let's see. That supreme being would be uh, Brent Maddock. Yeah. <laughs> uh, bring, bring or maybe John Welpley, since he wrote it. Oh, uh, maybe. maybe. <laughs> so there's potentially two supreme beings yeah. who condone such irony. Yeah. However, it is kind of... It is kind of uh, it does it does uh it is within tradition because remember because remember in the last movie how he, uh how uh he didn't he killed that shrieker with the with the bfg only to uh, yeah only to uh kill the car he killed it all right mm-hmm uh, shot through the heart and you're to blame bert <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was I was quoting the Bon Jovi song. <laughs> yes, I know. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I have everyone in our culture knows that song. It's a meme now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> How is it not dead? <laughs> I don't. Like the car. <laughs> Uh, bring it back around. Rebound. Uh, oh boy, we're just, 
we're just ADDing this review, aren't we? We are. It's late where I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's quarter to it's quarter to eight where I am, and we're just having fun. Yeah, we. Well, I think you know this whole movie. I think is just supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be serious or or silly. There, of course, there are some. I guess there are. I think there there are some moments that I actually do have some complaint, have a little bit of some gripes about, but we'll get to that later. Where, yeah. Whenever, whenever that is. <laughs> yeah, we don't. I mean, I don't have anything written down. I'm just winging it. Yeah. Uh, all right. So music. Yeah. Uh, Okay, I guess we can we can move on to music. Um, the what's I guess what's considered the the main theme, you know, when is it doesn't quite feel right as a theme to me. I I don't know why, but but uh, when it was used for but when it was used for the scene when uh, when uh, Jack is hauling ass to Bert's place and then the, and then the grab boy just like. Sl- just like slams into the concrete wall. I thought that ac- that uh, that music actually fit. Yeah, I mean it's really the sort of like country mixed with like I don't know. I don't know. Country mixed with some pop or something. I, Techno. I or it's some. I really don't know. I'm. I mean. Like or some cl- some club music or DJing. I mean, I thought I heard a record scratch in that track. You know, like the. Uh, I I don't know the music in this film. I mean, it had some good moments, but overall, fairly unremarkable. Uh huh. Well, the music. I mean, the music. Uh, when. Uh, when. They find when they finally get when they finally uh, get rid of the great white graboid and start and start uh, grabbing the guns to to uh, start killing shriekers. I thought that was actually pretty good. I mean, I really like that. I like that track. Yeah. But uh, well, let me see. Okay, how about all right? Now this actually is is. This next one is actually kind of my gripe. Uh, the the editing and shoot and shooting style it is kind of okay. Whoever was like, I guess the director Brent Maddock. I mean, he knows how to he knows how to use he he knows how to use the Saving Private Ryan or Jason Bourne style of shooting and editing, but he doesn't know when to use it properly. And I'm talking like the the chop the choppy move the choppy movements the quick the quick cuts the uh, the uh, the suit up, the suit up uh, sequence as I like to call it when they when they get off the rock is a is a good example. Yeah, it because it switches from because it switches from a uh, very. Th- uh, very like sm- like smooth motion, uh, no mo-, mo no motion blur, kind of very choppy. To going back to regular regular standard filming, uh, within the si- within the same sequence, and it happens pretty often. I mean, it kind of. You have to say, I'm not a big fan of that that often. Yeah, I mean, when it's done right, it's it's very good. But when it's not when it's not done properly. It's kind of, it's kind of more, it's kind of more as a look at me, look at me. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I think we're supposed to be directing this at Virgil L. Harper, the cinematographer. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see the. Fr- I mean, if I mean, it's not that it wasn't. I mean, it's not. When I say improper, I mean. The switching back between regular regular filmmaking and then this the saving private Ryan choppiness I mean the the whole sequence actually should have been shot 
like the, like the like the the uh, Ryan sequence to kind of give it a, to give it uh, some cohesiveness. It's yeah. It's uh, it's just that it's, it's the switch between the shutter speeds that makes it that makes it that makes it obvious and very amateurish. At least from at least from my experience. Let's see. Uh, Ian. Uh, Ian, how about how about we move on to visual effects? Well, uh, this time around, we get our first look at a CG graboid. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Even though I've seen I've seen this many times, and I've gotten older, I mean, I mean, I kind of still like the look of a of a CGI graboid. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It kind of gives it. It kind of gives gives uh it a little bit more person. It gives it a little bit more personality. But it and it's also nice to know there's still some pra there's still some practical effects. Yeah, I definitely saw a few uh, tentacle hand puppets. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, my favorite use of a graboid animatronic is when it is uh, when it kills Buford. Uh, you know, you know uh, the the bolt, you know the bowling ball IQ guy. <laughs> yeah, and when when he gets taken and uh, graboid just pops up. Feet out, feet, its feet just out of its mouth, right in front of the tourists, and then when it sinks back down, a explosion of dirt. And I was like, "Yes, that's how that's how you make an exit. That's how graboid. Yeah. That's the kind of exits graboid should make: an explosion of dirt." Yes. Yeah. It just. Yeah. It just says to people, "Don't fuck with me." Let's see. Something I have to complain about, though, we didn't get too much shrieker action. I know we didn't. I mean, most of the shriekers we see were in the very beginning, and they were mo they were a lot of it was CG, and it was mostly at night, and some of it was obscured by smoke. Yeah, I mean, I would have liked to see some shriekers like we saw in the last film, yeah. like just cruising around town. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, but you know, I think for the I think for the time. I mean, how can I mean? How could how could you write how could you write uh, you know the three three uh, stages of Graboid's life cycle life cycle and uh, and give and uh, give them you know just enough time to deal with them. Yeah, true. Right. But 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 you know, hopefully in you know in the sequels we kind of see more more of the shriekers. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. huh. All right, I can. Let's see. There's how about how about some of the humor? Is Tremors still has Tremors still kind of uh, kept? Kept uh, the spirit, you know, of kind of of being a good balance between serious and humor, or is it is it kind of cr has it kind of crossed the line to do, be more more uh, humorous? I think this one crossed the line into being into being more humorous. Yeah, yeah I kind of think so too. I mean, I mean, aside from th from uh, Jack uh, Jack's uh, ineptness. Uh, and this, you know, just the the naming of the creature. In fact, I think how, you know, how one of them got how uh, Jody killed one actually was was pretty funny. I mean, geez. yeah. Although I think I think maybe didn't really. Although I guess, you know, it's you know it's burning you know it's burning corpse. You know, stand, standing up, standing up, and then falling over. I guess is kind does kind of cross the line a little bit. Yeah, it's just this charred husk with the ribs from the wing just standing out, and it's like, and then it tumbles. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, I so far this is my least favorite Tremors movie. Yeah. Uh, I can, yeah, I can kind of understand that. Uh, God, I feel like there was, there was. Oh yeah, there. Oh yeah, they do kind of. There is kind of this one little bit of uh, leaning on the fourth. This little bit of leaning on the fourth wall, which I kind, which I kind of like. It's when a kitten. It's uh, when Jack meets uh, Bert and Bert for the first time, and uh, we cut to this kid who says, "Moms, take a picture with me with a tremor." And and Jack goes, "They're called a graboid." I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm sure we've all. Did, I mean, we all have experienced uh, someone. Call, calling those creatures a tremor. Yeah. So it's kind. Of, it's kind of like I like. I like when. I like when people who when writers they actually kind of do pay attention to what we as fans are as fans are doing because it kind of shows that they are listening to us. Yeah, I really do enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? Actually, the mom of that kid. Is actually Burton is uh the sister is the sister of Michael Gross. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah the so the, so that kind of makes the that makes the her uh her interaction with uh Bert even more funny, especially when when she calls him Mister Goober. Oh my gosh, I feel so bad for Bert. I know. Huh. Ah, I almost felt like there was... I felt like there was more that we could talk... That uh, we could talk about this one. Uh, let's see, we covered visual effects, characters, the the creatures. Uh, music... Uh, John, you want to go over favorite moments? Yeah, I th- yeah, I, I think I think we have, I think we can do that. Uh, what's what is your favorite moment out of Tremors three? Hmm, I'm not really sure. The ending is towards the top for me. I did enjoy the ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. For me, it's uh, when it's when Jack's baiting the graboid to Bert's place. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I, I, I mean, let's think about this. Bert is now is the only only character to have survived being inside a graboid, being eaten by a graboid, and and is able to make it out. Yeah. Whoo. I've and going more for that going more for the uh, Moby Dick he would or I guess Pinocchio at I think it's Pinocchio for this uh, he was in the belly of a whale <laughs> but I think I guess what I but what I like about it is that not I mean it's funny and it's funny and badass at the same time I mean you have Bert who's you have Bird, who you think is dead after being eaten by a graboid, only to only to actually radio to Jack. No, I am alive. What you gotta do is just haul, is haul ass to my place and and get me out of here. And so Jack Jack does exactly that, and graboid's just on his on his tail is just getting is just moving at high speeds, and then kabam, slams into the concrete wall. My God. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Uh, my second favorite uh, scene has to be when the tour scene goes awry. Oh, yeah. And that stupid guy in the freaking plaid shorts and the, mm-hmm. yeah. in the glasses and the... Uh. Yeah, the guy that we don't really... We didn't really care for was just... I'm... They were. I mean, there was poten- I mean, there was p- potential for him. I mean, especially you know, 
just right b the last second before he, before he uh got eaten he cut he probably could have just become i don't know like a maniac like a serial killer like i mean he had the knife and he was and he was oh buford yeah yeah Yeah, he had the. I mean, he had the. I mean, he seems to be threatening Mindy. Yeah. I mean, he had potential to actually be more than just an idiot, and that kind of would have made made him getting eaten by the graboid, you know, you know, less less hilarious, less you know, hilarious and kind of more dramatic. I mean, maybe it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they could make it hilarious. I mean, any, but anyway. Have a graboid tentacle reach up and snag him by the crotch. <laughs> I wonder if that... Hey, this whole movie is full of crude humor. What's a little more? Mm -hmm. I yeah, I kind of wonder if any of that might have ha might happen in the sequels. Hmm. Maybe. All right. Uh, I don't know if I actually have a second favorite scene. Uh, maybe... Well, I think the I think the beginning, I think the beginning when you know, Bert just mows down, like mows down all those shriekers, or you know even when even when they're coming even they're racing right toward uh towards him and he's just all nonchalant about it, and then after he's done killing every one of them, just turns stands up, stands up turns to the the news crew and goes any questions. Yeah, that that was funny. Mm -hmm. And the news crew is just panicking because he's letting all the shriekers come close. And... <laughs> I mean, it's actually it's a good... everything is under control. <laughs> it is. It's act. It's a good intro. It's a good intro for for Bert because this is now his movie. This is his Tremors movie. It is, yeah. yeah. And uh, according to the IMDb page. This is Michael Gross's favorite movie. I can probably understand why it's the first movie where he gets top billing. Yeah. Let's see. What's your favorite line? Hmm. Hmm. I gotta think on this. You can go ahead. I know. Uh, I got a. F I got a few of them. Of course, they're B they are Bert's uh, snide remarks. I think one that I've been finding myself saying most often, especially nowadays, is uh, f find something simple and complicate it. Hmm. Yeah. Oh sure. Just so I can get a grabway to swallow this. <laughs> With this for twenty nine ninety five, <laughs> squander the taxpayers' dollars, and blah blah. blah. <laughs> I, I get what you're. I really get... sounds like our government today, doesn't it? Uh huh. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think if I had an inner voice, it'd be telling me to tell you to get lost. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, yeah. Bert ha yeah. Bert has a lot of a lot of great quotable lines in this. And it's all it's almost kind of unfair. I mean, because none of the other character any of the of the other characters get quotable lines. I mean, can yeah. you, I mean can you I mean can you remember anything of what Jack said aside from hit from uh. His slogan that he like that he likes to uh, announce. Um, clouds. Cl clouds. Clouds. Mm. I like clouds. The <laughs> big goofy cloud and the wispy cloud. And, uh, that that's really the only thing that comes to mind, and that's not even quotable. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. The universe provides. Mm. I don't I don't know. I think I don't know, but for some reason we like we remember more of the we remember more of the of the snide comments from uh from these movies. 
Well, they're very applicable. I know, yeah. And, and you know, and something something that you can use, you know, every day when you've when there's someone who just gets under your skin. Yeah. I don't yeah. I don't know. Uh, let's um, see. Let's see. Uh, I mean, well, you know, we do re- we do remember lines from Miguel, but that's because he's just he's so cheery, he's so optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we th- I mean, we did quote uh, we quote his dental floss. I always carry it. <laughs> Uh yeah, I think I think that I think that's it. Um Huh. I uh ranking? I get I guess the legacy? <laughs> it's just, uh I don't Ish? I don't know about Is there a legacy? I don't don't really know. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I guess we can just go with the with ranking. I I think uh, while while still being being a serviceable sequel, uh, Tremors three just kind kind of just fails up to fails to live up to kind of the standards set by its by its uh, two predecessors. But it's still kind of enjoy it's still kind of an enjoyable fun uh, fun movie. So I think that still war- warrants like a passing rank. I guess maybe seven point five out of ten. Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, I mean, I don't know what was going on with Universal or film, or the film industry in general during the first couple years of two thousand, but they were not very kind to films during that period. No. I mean, between Jurassic Park three, Tremors three, and what else? Spider-Man three. Yeah, that. Uh... <laughs> mm-hmm. Ghost Rider. <laughs> you know, funny enough is that th- that those the last two we mentioned, plus uh, Fan- Fantastic Four: Rise of the Silver Surfer, all came out in the same year, two thousand seven. And what happened next year? We get Iron Man. Hmm. It's like a, so. It's like a phoenix moment. You gotta make some crap before you rise out of it in a blaze of fire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. Well. All right. Well, if uh, that's, and I think with that, you know, going, th- we went, fr- we go from universal to to talking about Marvel. I guess that means that uh, the end. That uh, that's the end of this review. Uh, yeah, we're we're out of steam for this one. There's not much to talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, be- so uh, until next time, you know, join us next time. Don't forget to leave a comment, uh, like like the video, subscribe subscribe for more, and uh, we will see you next time on Graboidtober with Tremors Four: The Legend Begins. <laughs>